This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. In foodtruck.java, food truck. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. In foodtruck.java, uh, write the method choose discount. Here we are. Using the multi select statements to decide which message to return. Ooh, multi select. All right, guys. And remember, that's just that fancy if statement we have already been looking at. So I'm actually going to throw that down first. What does it involve? It involves if and then a parenthesis where a condition goes curly brackets. I'm going to just space all this out some just so you can read it. Then we're going to have an else if, which will be our second condition, option number two. And then finally, we're going to have an else, which you can think of as the default choice. If nothing else happens, this must happen. Now, a few things with this uh, well with a multi-select statement. Only one of these things can be true. So let's say inside of our if was x, y, and z. All right. So if this first thing is true, right, if it said if uh, Mr. Kaiser's talking, that would be true right now, then X happens. And the rest of this is done. It is not possible for anything else to run here. That's all over. All the if is over. Now code down here can run for sure. But just the else and the else if and all of this dead never happens impossible because something else was already rendered to be true already evaluated to be true. Now let's say that this isn't true. Let's say this says the uh, turtle is talking. I don't have a turtle. I hate to break it to you. No, I didn't kill a turtle. There's just no turtle here. Turtles are cool. So if the turtle is not talking, this would be false. And then it must look at this. And maybe this says Mr. Kaiser's talking. Okay, this would be true. And Y must happen. X right down here could not happen. Now, let's say if this said if the dog was talking. That would be false as well, and so then Z would have to happen. That being said, let's go ahead and fill this in, and it might get a bit more clear. Our three options are quantity is divisible by 12, divisible by 6, and then at all other times, no discount. Okay, so quantity, let me get that. I'm going to spell this wrong. I know it. Quantity here, quantity here. Now, this one, we need to know if it's divisible by 12. You might be tempted to be like, all right, divisible by 12, and it equals, I don't know, how do I do no remainder, Mr. Kaiser? Uh, what if it's, uh, well, before you even get there, there's an easy way to do no remainder. It's your friend and mine, modulo. Now, let me remind you, modulo, what it results in is the remainder. So this now says quantity divided by 12, what is left over? So if quantity is 120, 12 goes into 120 10 times. There's no leftover. So what this would actually equal, what it would evaluate to if quantity was 120 was zero. Now, if quantity was 24, that's where the problem comes in. Just kidding, because 24 divided by 12, well, 24, 12 goes into 24 two times. But the remainder is still zero. It goes in evenly. Now, if this was 23, 23 over 12, well, 12 goes into 23 two point something times. So it would be the two times 12 is 20. I mean, if, if it was 25, two times 12 is 24. The remainder then would be one here. So that's what we need to know. If 12 goes in evenly, then the remainder is zero. And we want to return our discount of 15%. I'm just going to do result equals 15% here because they gave us this variable, so I might as well make use of it. If you want to be fancy, we could do a return statement inside each of these. I don't like it. This is more readable to me. All right. Now, the next scenario is going to be if it's over 6, modulo 0. And then in that case, it's going to be 10%, so pretty similar. So I'm just going to copy and paste and do a 10%. Guys, keep in mind, well, first let me do this one, uh, no discount. No discount. Uh, yep. Okay. And yep. Keep in mind, guys, you want to do 12 first. And here is why. Say you have a customer who buys 120 whatevers from your food truck. They're like, yep, I need to gain some weight or I'm just really hungry. I want 120 items. I know I'm going to get that 15% discount because it's 120. Now, what if, though, I did not check this first? What if instead of checking 12 first and giving them this 15% discount, what if this was my if first? Well, then what would happen? 120 over 6, 6 goes into that 20 times. The remainder is 0, and I would end up with a 10% discount. I, as a customer, would be really angry. 
because nothing else would get evaluated. That's, of course, only if this thing was up here, right? Because once one of these is true, it doesn't look at the other stuff. It just jumps to the end of the multi-select. Thankfully, I'm doing 12 at the top. So you just want to be really particular about what you assess first, because if this results in a true, it doesn't look at this other stuff. All that being said, let's test this out. Okay, so what I'm doing here is systemout.println food truck. I can call it directly, guys, because it's a static method. I'm passing 120 divisible by 12, 18, which is divisible by 6, not 12, and 5. Let's see if we have bugs. Hey, no bugs so far. Cool. And that is looking good. This is a tricky one, so make sure you're careful with your order of your multi-select statement. Onward.